Jeff Karen's interview, take one. Good. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, hi, uh, hi. Could you introduce yourself for us? Yeah, sure. My name's Jeff Cairns. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, lived there for 30 years of my life and uh, um, did a whole bunch of things there and uh, ended up here in Kumamoto, Japan. Um, Came here in 1986 in September, September 3rd exactly. Wow. In 1986 and have been here ever since. Um, yeah. How many years is that? Uh, I've been here, what, 36 or 30, something like that. 36, 30, yeah. Yeah, so 36, 36 years. years. Wow. This September. That's quite long, I know. Oh, it's more than half my life. So I've been wow. here longer than. I was in Canada. Wow, well, right, okay, you know, right. That happens. It does happen, right? It'll happen to me, I think. Yeah. are coming up uh, pretty soon, but yeah, yeah. That's, you're one of the longer ones that I've Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, one of your previous interviewees, John Moane, he was probably one of the first people I met mm -hmm. here in Kumamoto. All right. Because uh, he was here before me, and um, when I first arrived here, uh, a friend at that time who was here organized a kind of welcome party at my house. Okay, <laughs> so I, I was renting a small house at the time. And uh, John was there at that party. So, oh, wow. So, yeah, 36 years ago he was there. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Okay, yeah. So, you, so you've been the first came? Yep, or? he's wow. one of the first. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, a little bit ago you said you did a variety of things in Canada before coming yep. here. Can you yep. expand on that a little bit? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, well, in Canada I really didn't... Um, uh, in terms of work, you know, I had jobs that were not very interesting to me, actually. Uh, before coming to Japan, I was working for a company in a tech position that had to do with developing microwave antenna and uh, peripheral devices to in the microwave industry. Um, it got a little bit too heavy into military equipment, and that's when I kind of decided it went against my grain, so <laughs> I stopped. But fortunately at that time the opportunity to come here came up. So it was one of the things that kind of caused me to make the jump and, and actually come here. That's interesting. That's going to be my next question. What actually oh. <laughs> brought you here to Japan? Well, there's yeah. one thing. Let me touch on one other thing sure. that sort of happened in my previous life Absolutely. that was a great deal, uh, is still influential, and that is that um, I've been playing music my whole life. Actually, I started probably six or seven years old into music and it's just traveled with me throughout my whole life until today and um, we'll probably talk a bit about that but uh, certainly in Canada I was pursuing music most of the time uh, <laughs> which uh, you know was uh, my passion basically great yes. yeah mm -hmm. what kind of music did you do in Canada, I was playing mostly uh, jazz rock, fusion, and prog rock. Is that on a specific instrument? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've been a wind player my whole life. Right. Okay. So I was playing uh, saxophones and flutes at that time. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. And uh, so could you talk a little bit about what you like about Japan? Wow, okay, there, there are plenty of things I like about Japan, and, and uh, especially here in Kumamoto. Uh, but, well, the basic environment I like, um, especially here in Kumamoto, and more properly where I live in Kumamoto, it's very, uh, the air is fresh. Um, I have a lot of green or greenery around me. I, I just thrive off of that every day. It's uh, sort of, uh, it's what I fill my sanctuary with in a sense, you know. Um, and uh, 
Well, generally speaking, you know, Japanese people are, are very accommodating and very friendly, and、um, that started the moment I stepped foot into Japan, really.、Um, there were people, you know, knocking on my door that I didn't know that were bringing little bits of food and things like that just to welcome, and、uh, certainly these were things that.、Um, I was not used to in Canada. That tradition or that culture didn't really exist、uh, in Canada. And I live mostly in you know, bigger cities, so you rarely know your neighbors and that kind of thing. But here it was quite different. And it took a little bit of getting used to, but、uh, you know, I eventually did. <laughs> yeah. Right, I agree. And the food's great, fantastic food here.、Um, Yeah, those are some of the things that I love about this place. I agree, I agree. The、yeah. food's great, the people are very accommodating,、yeah. there's beautiful nature.、Mm-hmm. And I've been to your house, so、yeah. I can attest that、uh, it is、yeah. a beautiful area. Yeah, yeah it's a great place. You're basically in the middle of the mountains. I'm、That's、in the、great. middle of the mountains to the west side of Kumoto. Yeah, yeah. fantastic.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, not far from where you live. That's right, not far、I、from、think. where I live. All right. <laughs>、uh, so,、um, obviously, you love Japan, and、uh, as we all do, there may be some things you don't like about Japan. Could you expand on some of those?、Um, well, okay, there's some things I don't like about Japan. But it, it's kind of strange talking about it. However,、uh, I will well, let me, let me, because. <laughs> let me preface that and say,、yeah. are, is there anything that you don't like? About well,、Japan? I mean,、um, you know, upon reflection, when you look at things that you don't like, ultimately you're looking at yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually not the thing that. It, you don't like it's usually something about your own way of looking at things or your own conditioning that leads you to feel upset about things or whatever. So,、uh, I have to sort of preface whatever I say with that it's really about me, it's not about other things. But、um, I do uh, find um, Uh, drivers, car drivers, very confusing at times here. <laughs>、yeah. And、um, it's, it's odd because, as I said,、uh, generally Japanese people are very accommodating and kind. And you do see that on the road、uh, with these strange ideas like, you know, turning on your emergency flashers to say thank you. Right? <laughs> they're not used for emergency purposes, really. They're used for to be polite.、Uh, but then you'll see something, for example, yesterday when I was driving home from here, this university.、Um, very busy road that I typically drive along, and、um, I was suddenly cut off from a person pulling、uh, from、uh, an intersection. They didn't even look. They just pulled right into the road, right? And、uh, this is not an isolated incident. It's,、uh, it happens quite a lot, actually.、Uh, so, th- those sorts of things are frustrating. I suppose it, I don't really know why it's more prevalent here than it, it, I had ever noticed in Canada. I have no idea.、Uh, but it, it seems to be. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. I, I agree. I think. I'm、uh, not alone then in that. No, you know what?、Yeah. I think, yeah, once you're in a car, it kind of sets off that. It makes that boundary. Yeah. So you don't have to kind of be as polite. You can just try to do anything you want to do. Yeah. About it, I think. Yeah. I think it's interesting you said that our, the difficulties we have are reflections of us. Yeah.、Uh, I kind of felt that too when,、yeah. uh, before I came to Japan, I was. Very right brained. Oh, okay. Very artistic. Yeah. Didn't really have much,、uh, you know,、uh, yeah. logical、uh, ways. Logical ways of doing things, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And、uh, coming to Japan made me more left brained. Oh, is、I、that think, right? Yeah, I actually needed that. Oh, I, okay. I needed that structure. Yeah. That structural kind of、yep. uh, thinking in、yeah. my life. Yeah. One,、uh, I, I suppose one other thing that is much more、uh, topical and. and、uh, 
prevalent, especially right now, is um, the you know Japan is very much a monoculture, and uh, there there are a lot of group tendencies in Japan, whereas from the United States or Canada, being multicultural, you don't get so much. Uh, obvious group tendency in that way in, in terms of everyday things that people do but um, because of our last two years with COVID restrictions and so on um, I found that even though things are dissipating in terms of the difficulty difficulties we had and the restrictions and you can even see in the media they're starting to talk about lightening up this and that and you know tourism resuming and things like that um, the whole concept behind mask wearing in public uh, though you know to be honest in the past people here wore masks more than other countries do, did for a variety of reasons um, there seems to be quite a reluctance to let go of that and it's all kind of built on fear and and the way people have been motivated in the last couple of years but this really ties in with this this whole kind of mono action monoculture society uh, and the way that they're easily moved as a group you know and uh, this doesn't really happen in North American culture or in probably European culture as well. So uh, that's, I'm not saying it's a negative point exactly, but it's uh, at times uh, causes me to scratch my head and why are, are you yeah. thinking about this or is it just what you're doing? You know, what you're doing. You know? You're just following the group. Right, following, following right. The flock, right. Yeah, following the flock. And, kind of yeah, right. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. There's a huge reluctance. Yeah. Right. So like, yeah. Hopefully it'll come soon. And I hope that they do open borders like they say they're going to and allow tourism. Well, I know that that's happening even now more than it was. Um, I heard that uh, pack tours mm -hmm. are coming in. Like group tours? Group tours, but they're registered group tours and the, you know it's still part of the whole caution thing and uh, they're totally identifiable, whoever the people are in the tours, they're identifiable and accounted for so it's known when they come in and go out and mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. So you can't enter Japan as a solo tourist yet. Uh, but that's coming. I, I suspect maybe by the fall or, or a little bit after that we'll start seeing much more of that. Because other countries, you know, uh, are following that pattern. Uh, so what, what about your hopes for the future? Talk a little bit about that. Well, I hope I continue living, number one. You know, I'm 67, so I, I sort of want to keep <laughs> <laughs> moving forward and uh, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. It's funny how your hopes for the future change according to where you are in your life, you know? Well, absolutely. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, I hope I keep my, my bottom teeth. Yeah, they right. stay in there okay. somehow. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my hopes for the future, though, are... Um, well, uh, to be honest, I've never really been a hope-based person. I've never really been somebody that, you know, plants these, um, not so much goals, but sort of dream locations of being that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's, it's, it's somewhere in the nebulous future sort of thing. <laughs> never, ever done that. Uh, oh. I've always been a very spontaneous and uh, a kind of, in the moment person but one who who makes some kinds of judgments in the moment you know based on my own history so from that point of view um, you know I'm perfectly happy actually where I am <laughs> and, and uh, with what I'm doing um, my life is rich as far as I'm concerned and what that's, else that's can really I ask for? Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. yeah. You know, I don't need, in, in terms of rich, I don't need loads of money or anything like that. That's not the kind of richness I'm talking about. I have 
you know, the richness of having family, having friends, having a good environment, uh, yeah. having things that you love doing every day. Uh, those kinds of things are, are the richnesses that uh, I appreciate.